Hi parents. Okay, today I'm going to address whining. Kids that are whining are whining because it has worked in the past. If you don't allow whining to happen, then they are not going to keep it up. If you allow it to happen, you're going to keep seeing that actual response. They're going to whine. So why do kids whine? Kids whine because they have something they don't want to do or they want something very badly and they know that if they make a fit or if they throw a fit, pitch a fit, start yelling and screaming or just do this. I really want the candy bar. Why can't I? Or maybe it's because they don't want to do schoolwork right now. I don't want to do my schoolwork right now. I want to go play. Ugh. Ugh. First of all, that is not communication that I ever want to hear. So this is where you put your mom and dad hammer down and you make sure that you talk sternly. You don't yell. I'm sorry. I can't hear you when you do that. And you literally ignore them. <laughs> you just don't give them the power. If you give them the power and then say, oh, okay, you can go play your video game, then guess what? They just won. And sometimes parents, no, no, all the time, parents have to win. You're in charge. You're the ones who tell them what they're doing. It's your house, your rules. So don't allow the whining. Say, I can't hear that. I don't like the way you're talking to me. I need you to go do what I asked you to. Or you remind your child that back in the car, we said no candy at the counter. So I'm sticking with it. If you want to lose a privilege at home, that is fine. But there's no whining. There is no pitching a fit during this time. And I will not hear it anymore. And you just stay confident. You're the parent. Yeah. You're in charge. And if you and give yourself that confidence and stick to your guns, stick to um, what you know you want, then they will back down and they won't do that behavior anymore. If they do the behavior and it continues, it's because you've let it happen in the past and now you have to break it. So whining might take two weeks to get rid of altogether, and it's going to require you to stay true to you, your words and say, if you continue this behavior, you're going to lose a privilege. And it also might be that it turns into a whining fit, and it also might become a fit where they're crying. That might require a timeout because they are treating you very disrespectfully, and you put them in the timeout, the timeout is, uh, if your child is five, it's five minutes and thinking about what you did wrong. And I've always, especially for the younger kids, that has been very helpful because they have time to think, they're in trouble, they have to apologize, and they have to own their behavior. They have to say what they did wrong. And we want our kids to do that. We want them to learn how to behave and how to be respectful during this age range, the younger age range. We don't want them to grow up knowing how to be bad and then continue that into high school and college and then end up breaking laws. We, This is when the training happens and it does get worse if you don't take care of it in the younger years, okay? So, so <clears throat> we want any behavior that is uh, no fun for us at home to go away. It usually takes about two weeks to get a behavior to go away and I would definitely address whining because you've never liked it. No one ever likes whining and it's also very embarrassing out in public. So, but you would have to really stay true to your words for at least two weeks to get that behavior to go away. So, um, you give a direction, you stick to what you're saying, and you don't change your mind and break down and let them win. That's not going to help you. Um, sometimes giving your children more information is helpful. So maybe while they're whining, you say, 
I remember that I told you you need to do your reading log and you needed to do uh, your reading time and you also had to do iReady. And there is no way I'm letting you play video games until those three things are done. So you, you're not going to hear from me until you do those three things. And then if, and then if you, you take them away from what they're doing, walk them over to a, um, walk them into a new area and take them away from the video games and whisper to them, I don't like the way you're treating me right now. Whining is not going to help you. Go do your work. Do you understand? And you say, you say yes, mama, or else you're gonna have a consequence. I will be very proud of you when you finish your three things and then we will consider video games later. And you just, you talk them through it, you break it down a little bit, and the more information you give them, usually they they start m moving to the beat of the drum that you want them <laughs> to be um, moving to. So, um, another thing is, is sometimes uh, they start whining because you haven't been around, or maybe you've been too busy doing your own things. It's good to re-engage with your kids so that the whining doesn't happen. And then you just pick up where they left off. Okay, so where were you? Now that you're done whining, thank you. I really appreciate you coming back to me. Can you tell me what you were doing? Oh, mom, I was doing this math problem. Oh, okay. Well, how did? what do you need to do to start it up again? And then have them explain it to you, okay? Um... Yeah, and I would encourage a timeout if needed um, because it's important that they that they are listening to you. Um, but you, the most important thing is you have to have control of yourself and you have to know what you want. If you have said that you don't want a certain thing, then stick with it, okay? Um, but whining, once they start whining, you have to break that habit because you don't want to be embarrassed in public. And you also don't like the way it feels. I don't like it when kids whine at me. And in class, students aren't allowed to whine. And you can even say, do you whine for your teacher? Are you allowed to whine for your coach when you're at soccer practice? Okay, then you don't get to whine with me either. Okay, do you whine when daddy's here? Okay then you can't whine at me either. So you just, you know, you just um, point out some very quick things. Don't spend much time on it. And then just say it's time to go. And if not, they might need to have that consequence of losing a privilege or, or going to time out. And um, I'm happy to help you with that when you get to that as well. Maybe you're not a time out family, but you want to be. Um, I do have a time out. Um, time out is one of the things that I've addressed already. So you can go back into some of the old videos. But um, know that you're the boss. Be proud of yourself. Stay positive. And don't allow whining. Don't do it. Say no to it right away. Sometimes it takes two weeks to break that habit, but it's worth it. And if you see whining at bedtime, whew, you have to stop that too. And uh, a schedule always helps. Every, every area of your life, a schedule is very helpful a certain bedtime at a certain time so that they know you have a routine and they have to stick to it and you just stick to that routine and then that way they won't whine at bedtime okay i hope you have a great day you guys thanks for listening i hope it was helpful no whiners say no to whining <laughs> Bye bye